finding what causes that rattling noise you hear in your car, getting your oil changed, checking your tires, all things important for keeping your car in shape. And it's something that we could all probably use a bit of a refresher on. That's why we have Mike Quincy from Consumer Reports with us here today. He's taking your questions about finding the right mechanic and making sure you get the right bang for your buck when it comes to car repairs. You can get your question answered in real time. So here's how you get your question to Mike. You're going to text it to us. It's really easy. 336-379-5775. Remember, this is a text only, so please don't call, but text us in. We'll get it done. All right. So, Mike, first and foremost, you know, this is one of those things that we get um, emails about all the time. People have taken their car in. The mechanic's not doing what they thought they should do. So let's start at square one. How do we find a mechanic we can trust? I think the first place to go is if you're on social media, I mean, go to the, 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 the Facebook uh, you know, re, uh, regional or, or local areas. I mean, uh, my, my street has a Facebook group. My town has like two or three Facebook groups. Get on there and say, I'm looking for a trusted mechanic and you'll be surprised, but the recommendations will just start flowing in. Okay, and when we look at mechanics, we wanna look for certifications. We wanna look at specialty shops. Explain those last two things. Sure, the, 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 the certification that, that most mechanics uh, have to go through, they're usually going to have a sticker in their, in their shop window to show that they're certified. And you can always ask to see it if, if you're wondering. But, the, but the, the point that you bring up about specialist shops is, is a good one because uh, some of the, the more boutique brands, like I remember years ago when, when Saab was an actual, you know, manufacturer. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, really, it shows how well I am. But, but there were very specific Saab mechanics in my area, and that's all they worked on. So, so you can, you can, if you have a Porsche, a BMW, uh, and you, you want to go for an independent mechanic, uh, get, get specific recommendations for, for those that specify for your manufacturer. Yeah, I can think of specific Volkswagen and Honda mechanics right here in the triad. Okay, so let's talk about other things to consider before picking a mechanic. So, I mean, in terms of, of what kind of maintenance that you that you might need, mm -hmm. the the, bi the Bible of your car is is the owner's manual. It's surprising how few people actually you know look at this. But inside this incredible book will tell you exactly what you need. But it's also important to know what you don't need. For example, a lot of cars' engines have a sealed uh, uh, reservoir for their transmission fluid. It never has to be replaced. So if you have a mechanic that says, oh, at 50,000 miles, we're going to replace the transmission fluid. Well, you know, that's nonsense. So the more you know, the more you know. All right. One of the things on the graphic was give the shop a like a dry run uh, first before you actually like commit to a bigger repair. How do you do that? Like you ask them to do an oil change or a tie rotation or something like that? Sure, sure. That's that, that's a great way to start. You're going to get an idea of how much time and attention the mechanic or, or the shop owners might give to you, uh, their attention to detail, the kind of work, the kind of prices they want, whether or not the, the, the job was done on time, uh, all that stuff. I think a dry run is a great way to go. All right. And that is before you get into a situation where you have to get your car fixed right then and there. All right. Speaking of that, how do you gauge of what you need fixed and how much it's going to cost? Because most of us, we don't know really what our car needs. We're depending on that mechanic and we're also depending that he's going to or she's going to be trustworthy. Right. I'm, I'm probably going to sound a little bit like a broken record, so bear with me. But that owner's manual is going to tell you some of the real critical things, things you definitely cannot uh, afford to, to neglect. For example, a lot of cars have a timing belt, and this is an, a, this is a super important component of your engine. If you don't replace the timing belt and it breaks, you could have to you're you're on the you're going to be on the hook to replace probably a, 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 your whole engine. So, in terms of of the the interval for the mileage, some cars are like 60, 70, 80 thousand miles for the timing belt. Make sure that you that you know what that mileage interval is. And again, you could go to your dealer and get it done because they're trained and they have the tools and all the software and, and they probably do a phenomenal job. However, an independent mechanic is probably going to be cheaper. And again, you find somebody that's a Honda specialist, a Toyota specialist that does uh, timing belts you know, several times a week, and you probably can, can save a little bit of money. I mean, that doesn't to say that, that the, the regular car dealer um, maintenance areas or service departments aren't good. A lot of them are. But, but if you're looking to save a little money, and these days, who isn't, uh, I would definitely get the recommendation for a good independent mechanic. All right, let's talk about specifically when you go in to get something fixed. Are you asking for something in writing? Are you asking for an estimate? How specific do you need to be? 
Uh, I, the, the more specific, the better. For example, Consumer Reports has this feature on our website, consumerreports.org, called the Car Repair Assistant. And, and and you punch in your 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 make and model and year of your car, and it'll give you a rough estimate about how much the repair is going to cost. You take that estimate to your mechanic, and you compare it with what he or she is, has has uh, in, you know have, with the idea that she has or he has for for your car. Just to get a, a rough idea, are you in the ballpark or is, is one of these numbers completely crazy? All right, and it is not a big deal to ask up front, how much is it, this expected to be and to get it in writing? Absolutely. I mean, you, you can clearly say, why, why is this cost so much money? And they might say, well, the parts are super expensive or the, the, the tools that we need or the software that we need to, rep to repair your car is super expensive. Uh, but, but, you know, ask anyway and, and also ask to get the parts and the labor broken out. You want to see exactly where your money's going. Mm -hmm. And if someone says, I just don't have time to do that, then you probably need to go to another mechanic. All right. What we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break and we are going to take your text questions when we come back.